Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have a really, 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 really fun video. We're doing Lagrangians and Euler Lagrange equations of motions. And, um, the equation of motion for a pendulum on a string. And we're going to look at the string as massless, right? We want no, you know, complicated moment of inertia. We want simplicity. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to use Euler Lagrange to compute the equation of motion, and then we're going to verify it using, um, you know, looking at the system, saying, okay, this is. What is this? And then actually coming up with the equation of motion. And we're going to see significant ease in using Lagrangians. Because Lagrangians uses scalars. There's no vectors involved, right? L is equal to T, which is just an energy quantity, minus U, which is potential energy, which is another energy quantity. So what we're going to do first is we're going to compute the Lagrangian, right? And then we're going to use this um, Euler Lagrange equation of motion to compute the equation of motion. And here you have QI, which could be, for example, say you had, say you had spherical coordinates, it could be R, theta. Phi, equation could be x, y, z, it could be a lot of things, it could be coupled. So let's compute T. T is the kinetic energy of the system. Now, it's a system and it's rotating, right? So it's going to have some angular frequency. And that's what we're really interested in. It's going to have some moment of inertia. So if you guys may remember, okay, energy for a body rotating is 1 half omega squared. And in this case, I, right, it's the distance away from here. This is massless, so it's just going to be m. Uh, this is l, l squared. So one half m l squared, and you can write omega as theta dot, theta dot, and then squared. So now we have this. Now let's compute u. I'm going to pick this as my potential energy being zero. I then look down here, right at this point. It's minus m g l. The pendulum's here, and then up here. This is now minus mg l cosine theta. So it's minus mg l cosine theta, some function of the angle itself. So now we're going to set up a Lagrangian. I'll do this in a fun color. I love colors and blue and green and red and all. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So, okay, we have one half. I'd like to say, okay, ml squared and theta dot squared. You know, physics can be so fun if you just sing when you do it. One time. Okay, no, it's not time for story time. Okay, so we have this. This is our Euler Lagrange. Again, the negative and the negative becomes positive. So now we want to compute this. And I'm going to rewrite this in terms of um, our exact situation. Say partial, L, in our case, our variable is theta, minus d over dt, partial Lagrange, partial theta dot is equal to zero. Okay? Partial Lagrange, partial theta is equal to, again, well, partial theta, this isn't theta, this is theta dot, so it's a constant, right? Again, partial means you're looking at everything else as constant except for the variable of interest. So that means this is just some constant, so it's zero. Derivative of constant is zero. We have plus mgl cosine theta, so this is a function of theta, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine theta. We get minus mgl sine theta. Now I want to take partial partial theta dot for this part. And that's equal to, well, let's do this. Let's do d over dt. Take d over dt. And then, well, theta dot, this is a constant now in this case. So that's a zero. This becomes, well, this is like, you can think of theta dot as some, say, x in this case. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. So 2 theta dot. So bring it down to 2. To cancel this, you get m l squared theta dot. m L squared, theta dot, and then we take now the derivative again with respect to time. These are constants, m l l squared, and that becomes theta dot dot, or the second time rate of change, or alpha. You may have seen it. You may have seen it called alpha. So we have this, and we have this, and now we can set up this equation set equal to zero and solve. So we get minus m g l sine theta minus, because the minus is here, and then it's just this, right? This is that. So it's m l squared theta double dot is equal to zero. Now what we can do is we can simplify. We have l, this can cancel, m's cancel. Then we can times by negative. So we're going to theta times l plus g times sine theta is equal to zero, or theta double dot plus 
g over l so theta is equal to zero anyway we have this okay this is the equation of motion for a pendulum on a string and if anyone knows how to solve this second order homogeneous differential equation it's very very not easy so what we do is we say that we have the Taylor expansion of sine sine of theta is approximately equal to theta minus theta cubed over six and for this term for the really small theta theta cubed is really really small and it's negligible so you get theta so then you get this famous simple harmonic oscillator plus g over l theta is equal to zero okay we did it we solved for the equation of motions which is this this is an approximation using euler lagrange euler lagrange equations of motion so now what we want to do is we want to verify this we want to say okay let's look at the system and see if this is accurate so i'm gonna do this part in green okay so what we have here is we have a torquing force now you may recall that torque i'm going to actually call torque big n capital n is equal to r cross f and if you haven't seen that this is r f sine theta in our case we see that this is our r this is the length it becomes r becomes l f is the force restoring it which is right here this is the force pushing it back and it's perpendicular to this and that is just um mg sine theta right we see that which is perfect exactly what we have so we get l mg sine theta but what does this also go to well it's equal to i the moment of inertia times alpha or i theta double dot oh and we made a sine error this is look at how it's negative right it's pointing in the opposite direction so this is actually a negative okay now we're going to pop this one down here and this one down here because they're equal and we're going to do i theta double dot plus l m g sine theta is equal to zero then we're going to get theta double dot plus l m g over i sine theta is equal to zero now in our case we're looking at the moment of inertia i be a point mass on the end of a massless string so it's going to be m l squared and this then becomes theta plus uh, the m's cancel you get one over l you get g over l sine theta which is exactly what we got that's that's all i have for the video today i really hope it was useful really fun if you guys like me to do a video on, on coming up with this i i would more than love to please leave comments please you know let me know i'm trying to like um post more you know have more fun because i know everyone likes to have fun doing math and physics and especially with gus so I hope you guys have an amazing day. This was useful. All right, bye.